Coming up, animation students help a local author on his journey. And a Frisco ISD superhero bounces back into action. All this and more, Frisco ISD TV starts now. Welcome to Frisco ISD TV. I'm Shaylin Broom. And I'm Maria Lemke. First off, we take a look at students who are pigging out on science. Bryson Solis has more. Students at Bright Elementary put on their lab coats and went straight for the heart. SciTech Discovery Center in Frisco brought a high level experience to new ages. SciTech is a hands on discovery center for children to get interest in STEM in the area, so science, technology, engineering, and math. We're trying to get that spark of learning and provide them with fun and a thirst for knowledge. It's important for kids to be able to not only know about the science, but to learn the pieces and to actually physically be able to do it. Our role is to come into the schools and provide something unique that the kids might not be able to experience otherwise. Fourth and fifth graders got to see beyond the life of a pig through eye and heart dissections. I felt sad for the pigs because we had to dissect their hearts, and but it was awesome. I like doing it. That was gross. You yeah, guys are bloody, <laughs> and it got all over me. I think it went well. The kids seemed to really have enjoyed it. They started off not really wanting to participate, but by the end, all the kids were really hands-on with it. They learned something new, and the teachers seemed to really appreciate it too. When it comes to pigs, students learn it's more than just a slice. And it had a, a small wall on the side of it, and like you have to cut into it to see which side was bigger and which side was smaller. In the end, we taste tested their knowledge on foods that come from a pig. Bacon, pork, and I think ham. Bacon, hot dogs. Bacon, ham, sausage, and I don't know anymore. Wait, no, and pork. I'm Bryson Solis for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Bryson. In the middle of it all, talent flutters onto paper as a middle school artist spreads her wings. Here's Kyle Kang with the story. Vibrant colors filled the room as the 17th annual Emily Ann Butterfly Festival art winner was recognized for her work. Butterflies Festival uh, is about art and insects and then the art contest I think there were around 800 entries this year and Hannah's was best of show. Experienced eyes are a part of the process for choosing the winning piece. We had 15 professional artists that come in and they jury the art. They take all the first place winners from kinder through 12th grade and then they determine the artist of the year. Hannah drew inspiration from her surroundings. I like realistic butterflies naturally, and I like you know, the natural colors, beauty of it. Uh, pops out from nature, and this year getting the grand prize really shocked me. Each student at Stafford Middle School gets a chance to fly. Every year I have them all submit one butterfly, and we study the butterflies and their bodies and wings in detail so they know exactly what they're drawing. And we learn about the festival and the meaning behind it so that we tie it into community events. The Butterfly Festival goes beyond its name to influence others to evolve. Emily Ann was named after my daughter Emily Ann who was killed at 16 in an auto accident and it pushed me into several things one being art and joy and living today and not practicing but performing daily. This piece of art shows that great transition from maybe sorrow into joy. I'm Kyle Kang for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Kyle. In higher learning, high school students organized an event that lit up the runway for charity. Here's Valerie Vasquez. Students in independent study and mentorship tailored their final product into a fashion show. 
topic of study was cosmetic marketing. And so me and Carter Kennedy and Yashi Adab got together for our original work and we uh, hosted this charity fashion show. Trisha and I have Health Science 3 and Pharmacology together at the Kate Center. And so she introduced the topic to us um, as her um, ISM presentation and we all wanted to help her out. Sewn together as an event called Movement, the charity fashion show is the right fit for both students and the Warren Center. For those of you that are new to the Warren Center, we are a 5 nonprofit organization dedicated to helping children with developmental delays all across North Dallas County. The movement has become very special to me. It symbolizes months of hard work and many late nights that I don't like to talk about. I think everyone's been thanked enough, but again, thank you everybody for being so supportive and for helping us organize such a successful event. It was a huge, huge collaboration, so getting sponsors, communicating with all of the models, having them donate their time, and then everybody donating their money, it was just... It was, it was a lot of effort on everybody's part. The stitchings were the reality of a fashion show, from the models to the stress. During the fashion show, it was the storm. It was hustle, hustle, hustle. We had to get people in and out. We had to make sure everybody changed everything well, and just, it was crazy. <laughs> I think it was very professional, and uh, almost to a point where I didn't expect it. Like, Trisha told us about her show, and we were like, oh yeah, we'll do it, expecting it to be at heritage, but it was at a very professional venue with professional um, models and designers, and it was really well executed. For a student to pull that kind of thing off, it was very, very, very professional, and the amount of crowd that it drew was also a lot, so I really applaud them for doing that. This runway experience was a dress rehearsal for their careers. In my future, I feel like this is going to help me because it's taught me a lot about communicating with people and like real adults in the real world itself and just managing your time and doing well under pressure. Style was in season as this show prepared students for the fashion world and benefited families in need. I'm Valerie Vasquez for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Valerie. Next, A Character's Travels leads to a journey for CTE Center students. Bailey Stone follows along in High Tech Happenings. Frisco ISD counselor Jason Wooden helped his father turn the page to a new partnership. My father and my mother, they traveled before they had children. They uh, traveled around the world, and that just kind of, you know, inspired um, when, when writing the book, just based upon his travels around the world and different things that he's seen uh, when he came up with the character Little Bear. I always you know, have to ask the question, well, you know, why is there a need? And, you know, what, what makes this product different from, you know, something else? And what can we do with this book, you know, instead of it just sitting here? And being a counselor in the district, you know, I know that we have, you know, the CTE Center that has, you know, many wonderful programs. And I knew that there was a 2D animation class and a 3D animation class, and I was wondering, would that be a project where they can take the book and possibly animate it? Walter Wooden suffered a stroke in 2013 and was unable to continue marketing his children's book, Little Bear's Journey. The Career and Technical Education Center's 2D animation class offered to take the lead. I had asked my dad, you know, would it be okay if, if, if we had, you know, if we had the opportunity to get animated and he, he was, he was excited. Our hope is, anyway, that he will see his his creation come to life and that he will get a great joy out of that, knowing that it can be put into Frisco schools and um, kids reading it from generations to generations. Um, I'm very excited to take a vision and expand it and, and make the pictures move and come to life and all the characters to really become real. Community played a huge role when it came to choosing the animators. Being you know, a small business owner in Frisco. Uh, his grandkids go to school in two elementary schools in, in Frisco, and you know, his son, you know, is a counselor in, in Frisco. I just love the fact that it's just kind of, you know, it all ties in. Wooden hopes to share his father's story with little bears all over the district. Uh, I'm going to donate a book to all the elementary schools in Frisco ISD, and uh, we're going to come up with a lesson plan uh, for the book or a guidance piece for the book as well, so we can tie in some things from geography to character building. The journeys these students are taking add miles to their portfolios. Every aspect of film that I really enjoy, I get a chance to put in what we're doing. Learning is fun, especially you know students that are involved in art. 
um, you know, they have such creative minds for them to be able to explore and have free range to be able to do things, you know, when they're given a task or assignment, for them to be able to, you know, have a, you know, a little bit of hands-on experience and a little bit of taste of um, somebody bringing something to them and them having to take it and, and kind of run with it. I mean, sky's the limit for, for the Frisco ISD students. The lessons learned are stacking up, and the students involved are all main characters. I'm Bailey Stone for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Bailey. Some kids grow up wishing they were a superhero. In Frisco ISD, we have our very own, who has risen above and captured the heart of the community. Natasha Burklow has the details. It was summer 2014 when an Ogle Elementary School family faced a tragic event that impacted the entire community. Brody, my other son, left to go grab like ice cream or something from another friend's, I think popsicles. And the other two friends that were left with Graham went inside to speak to the adult that was there. And so Graham was left in the back driveway by himself. And what we think happened is he climbed under one of the towels so that he could jump out to scare his friends because that's totally something that Graham would do. And while he was doing that, the, the mom came home and she was uh, just, you know, she was driving her car and because the towel and Graham were so low to the ground, she didn't see him and she actually ran over his head with her car. At the time, Graham Cormelo was in first grade. This accident left him with facial fractures and extensive skull damage. There was obviously, there was a possibility that he could have been a vegetable for his life. He might have never come out of it. Three. So if we wanted to make it four, put one across there. Graham's recovery has been nothing short of a miracle. From day one, the community support was just incredible. His, his first grade teacher, Miss Reynolds, I think she was there almost every week to check on him. Probably two or three weeks after his brain surgery, she brought in a, a little just a little poster she made that said Graham is a superhero and Graham read it. He could read what it said and it was the first time that he could do that and it was kind of a big wow moment. Ogle Elementary School and the surrounding community suited up to honor their real life superhero. They swooped in to help out a family in need. I think we were all just completely moved um, by this incident. Um, it's so amazing that he lived. He was critically injured really when he was care flighted to the hospital. They did not expect him to live. So not only has he lived, um, he's walking, he's talking, he's actually out of the hospital after 88 days. We heard about what all was going on and having a, a child that's a pretty close in age, um, we really, really felt for the family um, and wanted to do whatever we could to, to help support them through such a trying time. The fun run was absolutely incredible. One of Graham's friends in school is a little girl named Natalie. Her mom, her name's Kelly Herrera, and she lives in our neighborhood, and she's a person who, she's never even participated in a fun run, but she, she felt like she needed to do something for Graham, and so that's what she did. My girlfriend Kelly Herrera, who organized the event, uh, brought a few of us together and we organized this event to raise funds for the family. They obviously are not going to be able to cover all their medical bills. They've been off work, spending time with their son in the hospital and just have occurred, incurred a lot of expenses. So we're just out here to support them today. There were, I think, probably three or four hundred people that participated. It was an incredible event and it, it raised money for Graham. And it was just kind of, uh, it, was, it was kind of the crown jewel, I think, on his recovery. People dressed up like superheroes for it. Graham loved it. The rest of my kids loved it. It was, it was awesome. My favorite superhero is Super Graham. Why is your favorite superhero Super Graham? Because he survived a car accident. Although Graham and his family are still recovering, this neighborhood seems ready to battle against all odds. You can just live in a city, but what makes a community is uh, uh, people coming together when somebody has a tragedy in your community and uh, and doing everything you can to help. I'm Natasha Burklow for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks Natasha. That's it for this episode of Frisco ISD TV. 
Thanks for joining us as we wrap up Season 7. Catch us next school year as we cover Frisco ISD, sharing stories happening throughout our district. I'm Maria Lemke. And I'm Shaylin Broom. Thanks for watching.